Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. Welcome back to the video. So we talked about Martingale for position sizing. Let's talk about anti-Martingale. Just as a reminder, we know, I think you're familiar with Martingale by now. It's basically where you double your position size every time to recover your losses. So you start with one. If you lose, you double up to two. If you lose, you double up to four, eight, 16, etc. When you win, you go back to one. So the idea is that you'll just keep doubling up until you get back to where you were initially. Obviously, we talked about the dangers of that, talked about the potential uses for it in the right environment. Let's talk about the opposite now, which is anti-Martingale. And this is completely the flip side. And actually, when we drill down into it, there is some sense to this, a lot more sense than, than Martingale. Anyway, um, the idea with anti-Martingale is that when you are winning, you double up your position or you increase your position. I'm gonna say double up in this circumstance because let's just keep it so we can mirror it with the Martingale strategy. Of course, you can adjust it and suit it to how you want. But the idea is that when you have a win, you double up your position size. So let's say you start off with a position size of one, one unit, whatever that might be. That could be 10 pound a point, 20 pound a point, whatever, we call it one unit for now. So when you win, you win one unit. Then if you win again, you double up to two units. If you win again, you double up to four units. You win again, you double up to eight units. The idea being is that you're trying to capitalize on a potentially winning streak, if that makes sense. If, however, you lose, then you will halve your position size. So let's say one unit here is 10 pound a point. For example, if you're spread betting, then if you lose, your next trade is gonna be half a unit, which is gonna be obviously five pound a point in that example. If you lose again, then your next trade is gonna be quarter unit or half of the half. So it's gonna be two pound 50 a point and vice versa going the way down. The idea with that being that if you're on a losing streak, you need to reduce your position size. Now. This comes from the whole gambler's fallacy of if I'm on a winning streak on the roulette table, I need to you know, press it hard. Let's forget about that for now. Let's look at it purely subjectively in a trading, um, a trading situation because that's what we're interested in. Or what we're really interested in is knowing, can this strategy help us make more money in trading? Pretty much simple as that. And I think the answer is yes. Let's look at what I, why I think that. If you would consider um, the general market conditions, and I'm just gonna talk about a stock market here, it could be anything, markets tend to trend for the majority of the time and then they'll chop around for a few months, then they'll trend, you know, we'll have a bull market, then they'll chop around a bit, then maybe we'll have a little bit of a bear market, then they'll chop around a bit. So you're gonna get these kind of trending situations. Um, now, obviously it's gonna be different for day trading and I'm really kind of, I'm really just uh, making loads of assumptions here and you could pick me up on these quite rightly in the comments below if you so wish, but I'm making some assumptions here and saying, well, how can we use this to our benefit? Let's say that we are in an uptrend and we are looking to buy a pullback. So, okay, we're simplifying things a lot here, but let's say that's the situation we're in. Could we've had a bull run for, uh, you know, several years, or it could be that we've had several days of uptrend, or even in intraday, we've had several hours of uptrend and we're pulling back now, a little deeper pullback after two kind of small pullbacks, and we're looking to get on board what we consider is a trend type day. And obviously if we're wrong on the trend type day, this is where it could, could go wrong. But the point is, let's say we add to our position here and we have our first entry here, and we're wrong and we go down, we have our second entry here, wrong, we go down, we have our third entry here. That would be standard Martingale strategy. In other words, you're adding to your trades as you're losing. So let's say you add one, you get stopped out, you get stopped out, you get stopped out. Then you're hoping for that little pullback to un undo, undo it or undo all the losses. If you're using anti-Martingale, the theory behind it is this. Let's say you've bought this pullback and you're right and it goes up and you take a profit, okay? you take your one unit profit, the next trade you do, you double up. Now, from a psychology perspective, it's quite nice for certain characteristics of, pers of certain personality characteristics. Because let's say it comes up again and you're buying a pullback here, and then you go in on two units. Theoretically, you're risking your profits from the previous, uh, previous trade. So you've made one unit on that previous trade, you're using that plus your initial risk to try and give you more leverage. It goes up and then you take a trade again. And let's say this time you're going four units, that goes up. You can see how you've taken advantage of the trend and you've taken advantage of the fact that your system 
is working in this market environment. Now that to me is the key. We can forget about buying trends and buying this and buying that. This is almost irrelevant. You know, pyramiding is a different thing where you add to the position, add to the position and hold the original position. This is saying, listen, my strategy is working. I'm using pullback in a trend strategy, whatever that may be. We are in an uptrend here. And while this is continuing, I want to press this for as much as possible. Now, sure, you are gonna to get to a point where uh, you're going to take a loss and then you go back to square one. But the issue is, you know, what point do you stop it and say, hey, I'm going to bank that and restart again and use my bas basket of strategies again. If we use a different analogy here, and let's say that was a very simple trending analogy. But let's say, for example, now let's go a little bit more complicated and say we've got a mean reversion strategy and we're looking to sell extremes at highs, buy lows, and, and cover the position when we get to some sort of mean or some sort of median. Now it could be a buy and Japan thing if we're being really simple, or it could be a pair trading strategy, anything like that, or range trading strategy, something like that. So let's look at the example again. The market is in a range. You know, we're going short, perhaps we've got a level that we're going short at. However, we've defined that. We're not going to sort of detail here about, you know, how we define that, but I'm sure we can all grasp a kind of mean reversion strategy. We're selling at the highs here and it's working out, we're covering here, we're selling it here, covering here. As we're scaling into the position all the time, we're utilizing again the fact that our strategy we're employing is for the right, is right for the market conditions. And it's such a big thing in trading that is that using the right tool for the job at the time. There is no point in going back to that previous example where we're buying pullbacks of doing that here, because all you're doing is buying here and you're in the wrong conditions and you can get stopped out. So if we flip it on its head and say, let's say we were employing the wrong strategy, because of course it's not as easy as just saying, this is definitely the right strategy. As traders, we've got to make assumptions somewhere on the line and inevitably we're gonna be wrong. Uh, and that's why we're always managing the risk. But let's say we did employ the wrong strategy. We assume that this was a trending market and we started to employ a trend uh, following strategy, whatever that may be. And we were buying here and coming out here. So we've lost one unit. The next trade, if we stick in with the anti-Martingale risk uh, position sizing method, the next trade we do, let's say we're buying this pullback again here and we're thinking, yeah, we're on a trend uh, and we're still using the same strategy. We're only risking half of what we were before. So in that analogy of 10 pound a point, we're now risking five uh, multiplied by the position size, obviously, um, you know, the position size has got to be fixed with the stop. You know, we can't say we're only going to risk £10 a point and then have a 100 point stop on one and a 10 point stop on the other. The total risk has to be the same. Um, so here we're buying and we're losing again. Let's say we bought again here and we're losing again. It's, it's not doing us much damage. It's doing us less and less damage as we progress through the trade until we sort of get to a point where it's so meaningless that we, you know, we kind of get back to it and say, well, what point now do we think that, hey, this is not working? You might even have a, a go even deeper on this strategy and say, hey, if I have five in a row, that's gonna cost me X, because you already know that it's that, and half of that quarter, eighth, etc. There's my total risk. If I get to that point, I need to reevaluate and say, hey, this isn't working, this is the wrong strategy. I'm wrong all the time. It's not done me too much damage, um, but move on. Now, very quickly, the disadvantages, of course, with this is that if you get one wrong, let's say you get your timing wrong and you are in a pullback situation. So you're pulling up, you're pulling back and you're buying it. You get stopped out here. Okay, there's your stop out. And then you go in again as it pushes back up here. You're only in half size. So potentially, I mean, if you've got a risk reward ratio of of uh, you know three to one, four to one, whatever it may be, and I'm simplifying things a bit here, of course, but you're only gonna be in half size, so it's not gonna undo as much as the lot, well, it's gonna undo some of the loss, of course, but, uh, and most of the loss, of course, but it's not gonna uh, redo, uh, make up for the loss as quick as it would do, is what I'm trying to say, is if you had a full position size, that makes sense. And of course, if you lost again, and then in quarter position size, you know, you've gotta have four times the move to make up for the initial loss. So. You, there is a danger of that is that if you get it wrong initially and then you're going down position sizing, if you kind of have a few goes at it before you get on the trend, let's say you're, you're, you're doing a swing trading strategy, you're trying to get onto a monster trend, whatever it may be, you're buying something, get stopped out, buying something, get stopped out, buying something, get stopped out, buying it again, this time you're right and you have that multi-day move that you've been looking for, you're only in potentially eighth size. So 
you've kind of not really got the meat out of the move that you were looking for. So it's some, you know, there's pros and cons as there is with any management strategy as to how you can use it and whether it's worth using it or not. But that's the kind of overview of it. Um, if you think that fits in with your trading uh, or if you think there's a strategy specifically that works well with, let me know in the comments below. If, if you like this kind of way of adjusting your position size, also let me know in the comments below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, guys. Thank you very much. And don't forget to subscribe for more big videos from me and other traders on this channel. Take care.